Hello everyone, Simon Jacobson here. Another episode of Meaningful Live. This program is dedicated in honor of Zarika Mitrovic. And we'll be speaking about why we need pain. Yeah, difficult topic. One that is maybe the big million dollar question that everybody asks in life. Why the need for pain? Why the need for pain? The way we grow. The fact of the matter is that the definition of growth itself, the meaning of growth, think about it for a moment. We take for granted, perhaps, we don't always focus on the details. Growth, by definition, means you're moving from one state to another. Okay. The question really is, let's put it, pose it as a philosophical question. How is it possible to move from one state to another? You know, for instance, you talk about uh, different species. Even considering evolution, which is over a long period of time, the fact of the matter, there are things that are very different. Fire and water are opposites in many ways. So they're stationary in their position. Whatever fire is, it's fire. Water is water. They may have some common elements. We talk about the subatomic structure of things. So everything has something in common. But the way it's structured on a macroscopic level, at least, we see things are defined. So how do things actually grow from one state to another? So, of course, the examples of growth are within the species itself, like a newborn child, or let's go even earlier, the earliest states of, states of gestation. So a one cell is conceived. That one cell was split into two cells, and then into four, and then into eight, and so on. So these are the process of growth. The child will be born after nine months, will grow from a one-day child, old, old, day old child to a one-year-old, five-year-old, ten-year-old, a 90-year-old, a hundred-year-old, many long, healthy years. So the growth is within the very species itself, and the growth can be quite dramatic, very difficult to compare a newborn to a full-blown adult, both in intelligence and emotions. But we see this. We see it in the world of the animal kingdom. We see it in the world of vegetation. So that itself doesn't sound like, okay, very surprising. But the fact of the matter is, when one species compared to another, they're very different. So when you really think of growth, you really think about change. And change, by definition, means that something has to shift from one state to another. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that things are always going to be painful. But things definitely, I think, are always going to be getting out of one state to another creates some element of, you can call discomfort, uh, disruption, some disorientation, or else it's not real growth. Take in the same species itself. We all go through the awkwardness of adolescence. Growing up can be painful, can definitely be uncomfortable. There are times, I'm sure everybody remembers certain watershed moments or certain key milestones in our lives where something shifts you suddenly realize that you're an independent individual. You suddenly realize that people, when I say suddenly, it doesn't mean overnight, it can take a little time, that if you don't take care of yourself, no one else will. That you're not the same as your classmates that you grew up with. There's all these different um, awareness that we reach, even epiphanies, that initially was always going to create some discomfort. Now, we don't like discomfort. That's why it's called discomfort. But there's no such thing as growth without it. So when we talk, think about pain or even suffering, that is something we all abhor. Who wants pain and suffering? Yes, there may be a psychological uh, phenomenon of people who have grown up with pain and they expect it and they're in their comfort zone when they're uncomfortable. But that's already an an aberration. So nobody likes to be uncomfortable, but there is no such thing as true growth if there isn't some form of discomfort. 
I remember reading, I forgot what it was called. It was a very interesting book. It looked like it was for children, but it was really has an adult theme. It was half the book was about a caterpillar's consciousness, and the other half was the butterfly. It's how a caterpillar goes through the metamorphosis of becoming a butterfly. Now, we don't know exactly what's going on in the psyche of each, but it's interesting. A caterpillar crawls. Does it have somewhere in its consciousness the, a, the possibility, the capacity to fly? And yet it does go through, go, go through a metamorphosis, the cocoon the, the, that it goes through, the chrysalis, and then it becomes a butterfly. The same thing as us children. There are many things as young children we don't even imagine we're capable of doing. Whatever the reason may be, either because we're still childish and, and narrow-minded and not really see all the, 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 the but our horizons have not yet expanded, is it because we're still in that prote- state of being protected by others, dependent on others? But there comes a point where you do see a broader horizon and you see new possibilities. That will always create a, a certain element of newness, and newness means that there's some discomfort involved. One of the great mystics, Rabbi Shneir Zaman of Liadi. So when he married, his in-laws, relatively for the time, had, this we're talking about the 19th, 18th, 19th century. And he had, his, parents, his in-laws, relatively, had some money. But there was no wiring money, there was no passing it on in any way. The only way is if you lived near them. So his mother-in-law offered and said, why don't you stay here with your new wife, our daughter, and we'll provide everything. You can study, you can pray, you can pro- you build, build a community, write, and we'll support you. Now, it was, there was no, no malicious intent at all. And his response, with a smile, he said to her, it's a very enticing offer. You know what even more enticing is? Is to go back into your mother's womb where everything is taken care of. What you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, everything. 24-7 for nine months, a child is completely protected in the, in the cocoon, in the womb, insulated, immunized. However, he said, the, the Rabbi Shnei Zalman said to his mother-in-law, he said, the problem is the child has gotten too large and the space has gotten too small. And thus, as comfortable as it is, as enticing as it is, it's just not... So this is true. The first, does any child that you know, the first day they go to school, does not cry? First time they go to summer camp overnight, they leave home. There's always going to be an element of sadness. Because that moving from a state where things were predictable, comfortable, consistent, and now you're going to an unknown. There are risks involved. Every parent knows this. Everyone knows this. And yet, it's the only way to grow. The only way to grow. To shed one layer of skin to assume a new layer. A seed needs to deteriorate, erode, as it metamorphosizes into a plant, to a sapling. You need to melt a piece of gold in order to shape it into a beautiful ornament. Creativity is a child of frustration. And the greater the creativity, the greater the frustration that precedes it. You ever write a paper? You ever deliver a talk? It's not easy. It's hard to do. You do all the research, the confusion starts setting in. At first you thought you had it all figured out, then new details come into play, and you get all lost to the point you could sometimes even give up. But as you see it through, what happens is suddenly... Again, suddenly is a, a euphemistic term. What I mean by suddenly means in time. Things begin to emerge. Patterns begin to emerge. And you come to a whole new way, a whole new level of awareness. So in, inherent in all of this is that process, what we would call pain. Now, of course, the argument is, host one second. That's the natural pain that comes with all normal growth. But why do we have to have excessive pain? See, people, God forbid, suffer terribly physical pain, psychic pain, emotional, psychological. So this is not meant to be a justification for the pain and suffering in our life, and especially when it's 
to the extreme. There are mysteries that we will never understand. That's not the question why some people suffer more than others, or why good people suffer, or why a good God would allow good people, why would a good God allow evil to happen to good people, or the famous question, why the wicked prosper and the good suffer, and the righteous suffer. That's a whole other discussion. The question is, the fact that it does exist is very clearly inherent to the very process of growth. Is that an explanation? Of course, the great God could have created it a whole different way that would never have worked that way, that you could have grown without any discomfort. But by definition, that's not called growth. Growth means that you're assuming and you're entering into a new paradigm. I've shared this, I believe, in the past. I remember in summer camp. So, a summer camp in Bungalow County, the summers. So, I was a relatively fine swimmer. This was probably my early teens, I don't know, 12 years old, 11 years old. And now I wanted to learn how to dive. I think I saw diving in the Olympics or I saw, it, I saw people, good divers, and oh, there's a certain elegance to it. And I saw different types of dive, the swan dive, the, the, the swimmers, di- the racers dive, you know, different types of dives. And I remember standing at the edge of a pool on a, on a uh, diving board and for some whatever reason, I could not bring myself to jump into the water. And it wasn't because I was afraid of water. I, I, I swam. So I decided, you know what, maybe it's too high up. Let me go down to the edge of the pool, and I'll try to dive from there. Same thing. I started my countdowns, 10, 9, 8, 7, you know. Then I went back, okay, another countdown. Let's start from 100. All these different tricks you try to play on yourself. Day after day, I remember in the bungalow colony, I remember exactly where I was, and I could not bring myself to jump in. A summer passed, the next summer came, the same thing. Then I said, you know what, I'll tell you what I'll do. Instead of standing at the edge of the pool, I'll sit and just allow myself to drop in. Once I do that, then I can go back and maybe do it standing, then back to the diving board. Even that I was afraid to do. Irrational. It was completely irrational. I remember thinking to myself, what's going to happen? Dive, what's going to happen? You know, that bu- your, your stomach will burst open, that fear that everybody has. You know? And then what happened was a friend of mine did me a favor, even though I didn't expect to see it as a favor at the time. He snuck up behind me as he saw me doing these moves, and he just pushed me in. And there I was, pushed in. I got it done but it required him pushing me in without me knowing. And I was angry. I started yelling at him, what would you do? But obviously, once I was in the water, I swam. And I always wondered, what was the problem? I was comfortable in the water. I'm comfortable on the ground. But that dive. And then I realized, this is my theory. I've never substantiated it scientifically. But let me, let me posit it. Let me share it with you. I said to myself, you know what it is? It's not... It's the fact that there's a moment that you're suspended. You're not on the ground, and you're not in the water. Both of those I mastered. You're in the air. And even though it's a split second, and you know you're going to end up in the water rationally, but that place where you don't, you're not here and not there, there's a fear involved because you're shifting from one paradigm to another. And then I remember reading about a, type, a tightrope walker who explained with the art of tightrope walking. So most people think it's balance, training. And that interesting thing he said, people think, what what is the most difficult part of tightrope walking? So most people think when you get to the middle. You know, when you're at the beginning or the end, you can always go back, you can always go forward, but in the middle, you're nowhere. It's only one way to go, straight, or you're going to fall. He said, no, that's not the hardest part. The hardest part is when you need to turn. When you come to the end, you need to turn. Why? Because the key is the focal point. You're keeping focused on some destination that you're walking toward. And as long as you can keep focused, you keep walking that straight line. As soon as you get to the other end, you need to create a new focal point on the other end. And that turn is when you don't have that, 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 uh, I guess, centrifugal point that's holding you, that, that is keeping you like the compass that's keeping you centered 
So there is always in life going to be moments like that, blind spots, that always happen when you move from one state to another. The big challenge is, is while you're there, how difficult it is. To get to the other side or to begin where you are, that's the easy part relatively. But that vacuum in between, that transition, and the bigger the transition, the more uncomfortable and the more painful it will be. Now, does this resolve the issue of our discomfort? It doesn't, but it puts it into context. It tells you life is a narrative. You have to see it through. It's like frames in a, fo- in a film or chapters in a book. The chapter you're in right now is right where you are. Don't think of life as here and now. Life is a series of events and sequences that one will lead to the other. And there'll be times where it will be a real shift. And the greatest experiences in life will always be preceded by some measure of pain and discomfort. Now we pray that we should have the minimal amount of it, not excessive, not in ways that are debilitating. But even when it is, even people who've suffered greatly and have gone through very challenging situations, after the fact, you'll always see that they've learned tremendous things. And we need to have our eyes on the big picture, not on the small picture. Now, I say this especially in times like this. There's a war being fought in Gaza, atrocities, terrible sights that have shocked us all. And no way am I minimizing that. But the only way to really keep your composure and keep focused is understanding that this is an unfolding narrative in our lives and collectively in the entire world. And if we keep that focal point and we keep that in mind, we can see everything through. The only way out is through. And all those that have gone through difficult moments in life know that. So the cracks in the egg, the discomfort of one state being lost as you enter a new state is very much part of the process. So we have to be there for each other to hold on to, especially in those moments. Sometimes we need that nudge, that push of that friend against our will just to get us through. It should never be imposed. It should never be uh, done in any coercive way. But sometimes we need that push. That's how it is. And we need to know that the discomfort is very much part of growing. You lose your baby teeth as you grow adult teeth. The crab sheds its skin, it sheds its shell, I should say, which is a painful process in order to assume a better shell, a bigger one. And the same thing is throughout life, you'll find so many examples of it. And back to the caterpillar and the butterfly. We want to fly. When you want to fly, you have to change your mindset. It may be easy to just live grounded like a caterpillar, eating the earth, never looking up, following and conforming to other caterpillars. But flying, soaring, that's really what a human being wants to do. And to soar requires developing not just new tools, but also the courage to use them. The ability to go beyond the norms, to go beyond what we considered possible yesterday. So let me conclude with this question to each one of us. What are you capable of? How much potential do you have? It's a very difficult question to answer because you need to know how much there is in there before you can say how much I've reached. And we don't know. In a way, it's uh, almost like an infinite, I don't want to call it bottomless pit. That's a negative expression, but you know what I mean. It's something that we don't know how much there is. And the only way you'll ever get there is to get uncomfortable. The only way you'll ever get there is to explore the possibility that you haven't reached your destination yet. And there's so much more to go. To me, it's one of the greatest gifts for myself and for meeting others is to demonstrate, to show people you have so much more you can do than you've ever imagined. Believe in yourself. Believe in others. And have that courage. Don't allow yourself to refrain and decline new opportunities because it's new challenges. It's always easier just to stay in that safe zone. But it's only when you get out of it that you really can reach heaven and beyond. So I wish upon all of us that whatever comes our way in life and should only be blessings, 
But even when it seems like a setback, please see that as a catalyst, as a springboard for true growth. And don't let the discomfort demoralize you. Don't let it disorient you. Don't let it deceive you into thinking that that's the end of the process. Like the swindling staircase, in the words of the Baal Shem Tov, he calls it Schwindeltrep in Yiddish, which means swindling, like a swindler. A spiral staircase swindles you into thinking that you're not reaching your destination because you have to keep making these 180 degree turns. Actually 360, but 180 where your back is facing the destination, not like a regular staircase. But the fact is you are going up higher. And right before you reach your pinnacle, you're always going to face your back to it, meaning you don't even see it. So you can think no, no progress. Exact opposite. You're right there. You're right at the edge. See it through. Soar. Spread your wings. Be the best and the greatest you can ever be. Thank you. Simon Jacobson here. Meaningfullive.com, our website. Please check it out. with a wide array of resources to living a meaningful life, life skills that address every life situation across the entire spectrum. Please subscribe, share with your friends, share with others. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, feedback, comments. May we all grow to places that not only we can't imagine, that we've never even thought, we not, we not even imagined that we could imagine. Be blessed and be well.